Hello students, welcome to Sherpack Academy. In our lesson today, we're going to be doing our final lesson in Module 2, Royal Battle with Events. For this lesson, we're going to begin at the code.org homepage. From the homepage, we're going to click on Learn in the top left corner. On the next page, we're going to go down and click on Learn More in grades K to 5. On the next page, we're going to click on Course B. And for this lesson, we're doing Royal Battle with Events. It is lesson number 12. Once we're there, we're going to click on number 1 and we're going to watch the intro video. Time to get creative and use your coding skills to tell a story. Your story will have actors, and you'll be able to make these actors talk and interact with each other. So, create my own game. So, I have to move around the cat and the dog and make them say things. Start thinking of what kind of story you want to tell. The cat's always been afraid of the dog, and what if the cat figures out the dog's just trying to be nice? The win-run block starts everything. The move block will move your character, and the say block will make your character say whatever you type. I was making the dog come over and say, hi. She'll be all scared. This is the win actors collide block, which you can link up to the other blocks. I was making the dog come over and say, hi. But then the cat got scared, so ran away. Ah. If there was more time, it would have been a happy ending. We're going to click on continue, move on to puzzle two, and we're going to begin our lesson, Royal Battle with Events. Here in lesson two, we have a play lab. We're going to bring some of the blocks over and see what each one of them do. Over in our play space, we, th we see three different characters. Let's see if we can figure out what each block does. When we go to our toolbox, we see several different colors of blocks. The first one we're going to do is bring over a purple set background block. This allows us to change the background behind our characters. When we click the drop down, we see several different backgrounds we can choose from. I'm going to choose the rainbow background. I'm going to click run, and we can see that our background changes. Let's try a couple more blocks. Now we're going to bring over a say command. Here in the say block, we can choose our character and what we want them to say. We can also bring over a mood block. This can change how our character is feeling. We can do happy, sad, or other emotions. You can see that we can always click on a drop down arrow and the different characters can appear. We can change what each one does. I'm going to change a couple of our commands so that our bird will say hi there and our warrior will have an unhappy face. Let's click run. We can see that our background changed to a rainbow, our bird said hi there, and our soldier got angry. Let's try a couple more. Now we're going to learn about events. Events are the green blocks. I'm going to bring over a green up arrow event. I'm going to connect a move up and I'm going to keep it set on the soldier. You can see that in the drop down we can change different directions. We always want the directions to be the same for the character and the event. We're going to change it to left. When we click run, our soldier can move left by either clicking on the left arrow or using it the arrow on the keyboard. We can see that our background still changes. The bird says hi there. And now when we click on the left arrow, our soldier moves. And he's, he's still grumpy. All of our code works great. If you'd like to try a couple more blocks, click on the Keep Playing. Here in a couple of our puzzles, we'll have the ability to share our project. You can always do so to the platform in the link or by copying and pasting the website in the box. Let's click on Next Puzzle and move on to Lesson 3. Here in Puzzle 3, our instructions are telling us to have Daisy the Dragon say something when we click Run. Over in the toolbox, we see the, the Say command. We're going to bring one over. We're going to click the drop down, and we're going to have Daisy say Good Afternoon. 
When we click run, she should say good afternoon. And she does. Good job. Let's click on continue and move on to puzzle four. Here in puzzle four, they're asking us to use an event to make Daisy the Dragon switch to a random mood when we click on her. Let's look in the toolbox and we see a green win click event. We're going to bring that over. Now we're going to bring over a set mood command. This will change the way that Daisy the Dragon is feeling. We're going to set it to the two wavy arrows. That is the symbol for random. That means we don't know what it's going to be. And now we're going to click run. We can see Daisy says good afternoon. And then when we click on her, she smiles. That's a happy dragon. Let's click on continue and move on to puzzle five. Here in Puzzle 5, we need to get the knight over to the dragon. We're going to do that by clicking the left arrow. In the workspace, we see a green event block with an arrow that's pointing to the left. We're going to drag that over and place it into our workspace. Now we're going to go back to our toolbox and we're going to attach a move left command. We're going to keep it set to the knight. We want him to get to the dragon. We're also going to bring over a score button. Every time we click on the left arrow, we're going to score a point. Scoring points is a big part of many games. Now we're going to click run. And we see that Daisy still says good afternoon. When we click left, our knight moves and our score goes up. Great job. You guys are doing really well. Let's click on continue and move on to puzzle six. Here in puzzle six, our instructions are telling us to add an event so that the knight runs away from the dragon when we press the right arrow. We're going to start by bringing over a green right arrow event. We're going to use this to set the right button. Then we're going to bring over a move right arrow block and connect it. This will allow us to have the knight move to the right when we click that arrow. We see we have one for the left arrow and now the right. When we click run, we see Daisy still saying good afternoon. Our knight can go left, but he wants to go away, so we're going right. Good job. You can see that the event blocks allowed us to go left and right. Let's click continue and move on to puzzle seven. Here in Puzzle 7, our instructions are telling us to have our knight get all of the flags. To do this, we're going to need to add events for the up and the down arrows. Let's look in the toolbox, and what we're going to do is we're going to bring over a win up arrow event. We're going to get rid of a couple of our other blocks so that we can clear out some room. Now when we bring over our win up arrow event, we're going to connect to it a move up arrow. We're also going to bring a win event and set it equal to down. Now we're going to bring over our move blocks. We're going to have one for the up arrow and a second one for the down arrow. For this one we're going to have to change the arrow from up to down. Always make sure the directions are the same for the event and the move. Now when we hit run, we should be able to move our knight in all four directions. When we click run, our background changes to the desert. Daisy still says good afternoon. And now we can move all directions, up, down, left, and right. We need to get all three flags. Great job. You can see how with the events, our knight could move all directions. That's an important part of each game. Two more puzzles. Let's finish strong. Here in Puzzle 8, they're asking us to add two things to our game. 
The first is we want the knight to vanish if he runs into the dragon. Second, we want them to play a sound when they collide. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over an event when characters collide. In our toolbox, we're going to attach to our new event the vanish command. When the knight and the, and the dragon connect, we want the knight to vanish, disappear. We're also going to play a sound. We're going to have them play a crunch sound. So now when the dragon and the knight collide, the knight should vanish and we should hear a crunch sound. Let's hit run. We can see our background changes and we can move around. Let's see if we can run into the dragon. Oh, we did! You could see that the knight disappeared and we heard the crunch sound. Let's click reset. We're going to click reset and run it one more time and try to get all the flags this time. Let's see if we can stay away from the dragon. And we did. We got all three flags. And I think he got us there at the end. Great job, everybody. Let's click continue. Last puzzle. Here in puzzle nine, we have a free play. We're going to use our imagination to do some things to make the game more fun. We see we still have all of the events that we added in our previous puzzles. Let's add a couple new features. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over a set background so we can change that. We're going to play some sounds and I'm going to click run. You can see my background changes and we can still play our game. Try some of the other features and see what you can do for yours. Once you finish your game, if you'd like to share it to one of the platforms, you can. Or you can always copy and paste the website that's in the box. Congratulations, everybody. We've completed this puzzle, Module 2, and our Introduction to Coding course. It's been great having you along for the ride. We hope to see you in the first lesson for our next course, Coding Fundamentals. If you have any questions about any of the puzzles in this lesson, please review the time point in the video and review that section. We thank you for following along for all the lessons. Hopefully we'll see you in the Coding Fundamentals course starting in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and keep on coding.